What is good, my ninjas? It is your boy, Matetu, and today we're going to be talking about the Revita series weapons that just came out for this season and why I feel that it's going to be possibly one of the better weapons to have, especially for new players and veteran, veteran players down the line in end game content as well as against the new enemy, the Starless. So let's get into this video. <music> living under a rock and you haven't been playing PSO2 like that we have a new seasonal event that dropped maybe about a week ago and honestly usually they sometimes drop new weapons but a lot of times they do that's just what it is but this season just so happened to drop the Revita series weapons and honestly in my opinion what I look for that makes a break a weapon is the potential on it. If the potential is meh, not a good weapon. But if the potential is really good, then that's possibly one of the better weapons to have, in my opinion. Now, what makes this weapon so good is the potential on it, which is potency plus 25%, but you recover 4% of health every 10 seconds, which is fantastic. Fan. Fantastic. I think it's a really good perk if you're looking for survivability now, of course you do have Other potentials out there that gives you a damage reduction, which is also really good for survivability But in my opinion if you're crunched for health potions and you kind of just want to stay in the fight a little bit longer That 4% every 10 seconds is definitely going to come in clutch as well as having that bump in attack power with the potency now once you level it up, you get it to uh, level six, you get a 0.5% bump, which brings it up to, uh, I'm saying 0.5%, but you get a 5% bump in potency, which brings it up to 30%. It would have been nice if they would have bumped the recovery up to 5% and maybe lowered the time to maybe eight seconds. Hell, I even say nine seconds. So you recover 5%. HP every nine seconds or eight seconds, I think would have made it even better. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Take the good with the bad. You get the bump in potency, so we have to go with that. Now we're gonna be dipping in a little bit deeper into this weapon. You have the seasonal, you have the seasonal augment, which honestly, in my opinion, you definitely want to get rid of that. You want to get rid of that immediately just because once the seasonal event ends it's going to be useless so in my opinion i usually put something better you can put dread keeper 4 on there or maybe even giga smite 4 that would be really good uh, really good replacements for that augment or the health null i think it's called health null augment you could also put that on there which is also a equally good augment on there that would probably be even better then you have Dark, Dark Exploit 2, which honestly, really good. If you have Dark Exploit 3, even better. Potency plus 4.5%. 4, 4 if you have Dark Exploit 3, that'll bump it up 0.5, which will bring it up to 5% against enemies weak to dark. You have Alt Secreta 4, which unfortunately you have a negative on HP and damage resistance, but you get that bump in potency and potency floor increase by 2.5%. Then, of course, you have Mastery 4, which gives you that 2.5% bump in potency, as well as the 2.5% in potency floor increase. So, you know, eh, you know what I'm saying? And then, of course, you got the damage resistance at 2.5%. Now, unfortunately, when you have those two things together, Alt Secreta 4 and the Mastery 4, you're only getting a 1%, a 1% damage resistance, which, honestly, I wouldn't even go for I'd probably replace that Alt Secreta with me. If Dreadkeeper 4 goes there, replace it with that. Just because you get the potency increase and you get the damage uh, resistance. So, just my opinion. Now, looking at the attack power for it at plus 60, not that impressive. 692. But of course, you get that bump in potency. So, yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Especially against dark enemies. I mean, especially against uh, enemies weak to dark. 
not bad. You know what I'm saying? Not bad. Definitely better weapons. Like you have the Neos Strand, which is at 7061, the Kaklofus, which is at 746. So you have options. You definitely have options. But if you want something that's going to definitely bring the pain, especially to enemies weak to dark, that is the weapon to go with. Just because you have all of these augments and whatever else that you put on it, on top of the potential on it, that honestly could possibly be a great weapon to have, especially against the Starlets. We don't know what en what element they're going to be weak to, what whether it's going to be light, dark, you know, wind, fire, water, what we don't know, lightning. We have absolutely no idea. So having something like this in your back pocket is not going to hurt. As you can see, I have all of these weapons on me just because I have no clue what I'm going to be going up against. And I'd rather have an options. I'd rather have options versus just kind of going with the tried and true, which is the Neo Strain, which has no element on it. So that's why I feel that this is possibly one of the better weapons to have. Especially if you're new or a returning player or even a vet player that's been playing this game since day one Definitely put this and have this in your arsenal just so you can have it in your back pocket Later on down the line. You never know But later on down the line, but put it down in the comment section below. What do you feel about this weapon? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think that they could have done better with the potential? Let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, like the video, subscribe for more. I will be doing more weapon breakdowns like this with every weapon that comes out. Peace out, my ninjas.